You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, big topic, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Uh, some of the benefits, what are the risks? With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Chambers. Dr. Chambers, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Randy. Very interesting uh, topic, and we talked that, you know, it's nice to talk to a health practitioner that walks their talk. So you, uh, you live this lifestyle of being healthy. Is that right? Um, that's my goal in life, yes, absolutely. I, uh, I don't ever tell a patient to do something that I don't do myself. So before we get into today's topic, tell me a little bit about AMI. I mean, who's the typical patient and what are the different services you offer? Well, Randy, at AMI, we're a patient-centered clinic, basically, that uses, we use all sorts of modalities to actually help to optimize the health of our patients, okay? We aim to maintain their vision, their memory, their mobility, and their actual quality of life as they get older. A typical patient, it's really hard to say what a typical patient at right. AMI is. I mean, we have everyone from high-end executives that come in because they're losing a bit of self-confidence, they're not performing at their peak like they once were, to, to housewives that come in every day who are noticing they're starting to put put weight on and they don't have the sexual drive, they don't have the stamina, they don't have the energy that, that they had at one time. So what do you call it? I mean, do you call it uh, you know, anti-aging medicine, integrative medicine? I mean, when people ask what you do, what is it you do? Well, actually, I like to call it functional medicine because what we do is actually improve the function in every, every aspect of a person's life. Okay. Okay. So we actually address their hormone issues. We address their nutrition. We address their level of fitness, their ability to exercise. We address their nutritional supplementation. We address their the amount of stress in their life. Now, you know, one of the things you said is very interesting. You said that our program allows people to do more of what they love to do in life. Elaborate on that. Uh, yes, well certainly, I mean, uh, a lot of the, our patients that come in have had active lifestyles in the past. In fact, I had a man that came in the other day who used to be a triathlete. Um, he basically just doesn't have the energy to train anymore. So we put him on a program, and he's starting to feel like his energy is actually improving again. He started to swim laps again. He said, I'm ready to get my bike out and dust it off. And he's, okay. uh, it feels like in the next few weeks, he's gonna actually start running again. Okay, now we're talking about natural hormones. I know it's more than that because you're looking at nutrition as well and, and lifestyle, but bioidentical hormones, a lot of, lot of, a lot of press mm. about it, and, and now it's starting to turn positive about it. But uh, who's the typical patient that's coming in for the hormone replacement therapy? Is it more men, more women, what is it? Well, mostly it's, it's, it's women at first, and okay. the women usually bring their husbands in afterwards. Is that right? In fact, I had a couple the other day that came in together. She made her husband come in, and I saw them separately. Um, the woman said that her husband has become very irritable and unmanageable. Okay. Uh, when I spoke with the husband, he said about the same thing about her. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. <laughs> you know, but, um, Anyway, we, what we did was we actually put them both in a program. Since it was relatively recent, I don't really have a follow-up for you at this point, but to be continued. But is that common though? Couples come in together oftentimes, or um, the it's, wife it's, drags it's, in it's the It's not as common as the wife bringing the husband in later. Okay. Um, however, it does happen. Usually, the, the most typically what happens is, is the woman comes in first. She comes in complaining of, doctor, I'm not feeling the same energy that I had, I'm starting to gain weight. I'm, no matter how much I exercise or diet, I can't seem to get it off. Um, my libido is, is terrible. Um, I hate the way my husband looks. I don't even want to see him sometimes. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and that's hormones, you think? That is all hormones, Randy. Interesting. Yeah. So, so do you see reversals? And you know, look, I'm very skeptical, and, and people need to know this is a real interview. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, you know, this is, we, this, we just met. but. Do you see reversals Absolutely. In, in these symptoms every day? I mean, every week in your Absolutely. practice? Absolutely, and it doesn't take long. Once I get a woman on a, a balanced hormone regimen, regimen she uh, actually, we see reversals in about a week to two about weeks. About a week, what do they say? Like for example, a woman goes in, she's in her 40s, feels lousy, has those symptoms. Well, first of all, the first thing to go is gonna be the hot flashes and the night sweats. 
because okay. she's actually in a estrogen withdrawal state when she's going through the menopause. Okay, okay that's followed up by increased energy. She's no noticing that she has more energy to exercise. The weight starts to come off. Her libido starts to soar, and her husband doesn't look so bad anymore. Okay, okay, so it gives him a positive outlook on life. That's right. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, briefly, about your background and training, because I know mm -hmm. that, that uh, you, you have a master's degree in public health, you're uh, double board certified family medicine, and also in regenerative and functional medicine. Tell me about that. Uh, well, you know, I originally started off in a traditional primary care setting. Okay. And I spent about 20 years of my life doing that. Um, I became increasingly, increasingly frustrated with the fact that none of my patients really seemed to be getting better. I kept giving them medications to address one issue. And it finally dawned on me one day, you have to address the whole person here. You can't just put a Band-Aid on one problem and expect someone to get better. Right. I mean, instead of seeing an improvement in these disease processes, I saw what we would normally expect it as one age. These diseases actually got worse. Okay. So that's basically when I started investigating alternative forms of medicine. And I came across the A4M, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. A4M is the largest uh, association of physicians, thousands of physicians worldwide, and they're an internationally recognized leader in anti-aging medicine and optimization of health, as well as, as longevity. So it's doctors from all over the country get together and share their protocols and the new science of this kind doctors of medicine? Doctors from all over the country and all over the world, Randy. Okay, okay, yeah. good, good. Let's begin then with women. What, when should they go see somebody like you? I mean, what, what, Paint a picture of the symptoms. Well, at what age does it seem to happen? You know, it, the age varies from woman to woman. I mean, I am starting to see some of these symptoms of women entering menopause as early as 35 now. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't happen until later, until age 55. Normally, when women first start experiencing, they're gonna be noticing that they're starting to put on weight. That's okay. one of the biggest complaints that I have with women whose hormones are declining. Doctor, I'm putting on weight. I can't take it off no matter how much I diet or how much I exercise. Doctor, my fatigue is low. Doctor, I, I, I have no sex drive anymore. Other symptoms are PMS symptoms that are actually worsening over time, irregular menstrual cycles. You know, when a woman starts to go into the menopause, it may be four years before she's actually done with it. There's a four-year time frame that's actually called the perimenopause, and during that entire time, her symptoms can worsen and worsen and worsen, and her periods be can become more and more irregular. Now, how, how do you guys handle this, and how does traditional medicine handle this woman that's experiencing this? Well, I mean, do they diagnose them as depressed? There's a lot, a lot of doctors, because that's part of the symptomatology, they will diagnose them with, with depression or with anxiety and, and treat them as such. Give them okay. an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety medication. Different? What do you do that's different? Well, what we do, first of all, is we measure the hormone levels. Because when a person comes in with all, complaining of all these symptoms, it becomes apparent to me that we got to look a little bit deeper than just throwing a pill at them. All right. Okay, so we look at their complete hormone levels. We look at hormone balances between each other. Everything, every single hormone in the body works as a, in a very intricate web. Um, and if, we, if one of them is out of whack, then it's going to throw the others out of whack. So basically, we look at everything. And what I, what I do is I actually adjust those hormones so that we can achieve a balance within the woman's body and give her back some of the functionality that she's lost. So are you replacing hormones, replenishing hormones with these people? We're actually doing both, okay. depending okay. on the severity of, 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 of what's going to, on with to them. To more youthful levels, so I understand this you correctly? Know, I, my goal is to actually get a person, their hormonal levels to back when they were in their prime, in the 25 to 30 year old right? range. And they start acting like that, by the way? They start acting like they're years younger. You know, when I hear stories, we talk in the green room, we've talked over the telephone, I, I can't help but feel like that you're exaggerating about the reversals you see, about how a woman could come in depressed and, and no energy and anxiety and PMSE and all of these other things, and it's changed fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's common. 
It's very common. I see it every day in my practice. Is that, are you ever surprised, by the way? You know, I actually am. I mean, uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me how, how dramatic the reversal can be. I mean, I had a woman that came in recently, probably about a month ago, and she was complaining of all these symptoms. She was the most irritable woman I think I've ever met. And I saw her a month later after we started on her program, and she was just lovely. Okay. She really was. Did she tell you that too, by the way? She I'm said, no longer irritable. Doctor, I'm feeling better. I got a lot. I, I have to apologize to a lot of people, and I'm going to start with you. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's a great story. So what, now, now, now what about this, though? Contro you know, knowing you're coming here today. Some controversy. Hormones are going to grow cancers. Mm -hmm. Hormones are dangerous. I mean, that must come up in your daily life. What is your response to that? Well, it comes up every single day. Oh, it does? Um, okay. First of all, I mean, that's certainly something that women and men have to be concerned about. However, in women, what has been looked at in the past, any, all the studies that have been done have, have used synthetic hormones. They're not bioidentical molecules like we have in our body. Okay, okay. Okay, the um, Women's Health Initiative, which was done over, with about 15,000 women over the age of 55, which they followed for about five years, showed that there were eight new breast cancers out of, out of 10,000 women okay. more than baseline. The study actually was um, based on the fact that they were using synthetic hormones, which is not what we use today. We okay, use good. bioidentical hormones that have not been shown to increase the risk of breast cancer, that okay. have not been shown to increase the risk of ovarian or endometrial cancer. Okay, now, now what's, are there any misconceptions about what you're doing that maybe drive you crazy or that you'd like to lay to rest right here about this, you know, integrative medicine, functional medicine that you're doing? That it doesn't work. Okay. Okay, um, I see it working every day in my office. So there is science behind it though. Oh, yeah, there's absolutely there science okay. about, um, behind it. There's study after study after study, not just here in the United States, but in Europe as well, that have shown the benefit of practicing this type of medicine and using bioidentical hormones. Do you think this is the medicine of the future? I mean, this is what everybody will be doing? I think it is the medicine of the future, uh, Randy, because like I said, not only does it involve, bi involve bioidentical hormone replacement, but also it involves nutrition and exercise and lifestyle changes and reducing one's level of stress. And when you bundle all of those together, that's what really makes for an optimal lifestyle. Okay, good. Well, let's talk about the commonly replaced hormones. What are they? By okay. The way? Um, well, we'll talk about for women. For women. Well, of course, there's the estrogen, there's progesterone, but we also replace testosterone in women. Okay. Okay. Uh, we also look at pregnenolone and DHEA which are precursor hormones to all the sex stero uh, steroid hormones in both men and women. You know, we also look at thyroid as well as melatonin levels, the sleep hormone. Okay, okay. Well, then let's start uh, there with testosterone, okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, let me think of women as having a level of testosterone. Mm -hmm. But what's, uh, how does a woman know if she's low in testosterone? And do they really have levels of testosterone? Absolutely, they do. The, the ovary actually produces testosterone in women. Okay. Uh, most women are surprised to hear that they actually have testosterone levels. The thing about testosterone is that in both in men and women, a deficiency will cause decreased muscle mass, decreased libido, and in increase in abdominal fat. And when she starts experiencing those three symptoms, she sh that, that's a good indicator that she may be low on testosterone. Low testosterone in women is also associated with uh, very decreased energy levels, poor sleep, poor memory, poor concentration, decreased sex drive. Um, so it feeds the muscle, by the way. Is that right? I mean, it kind of feeds the muscle or helps you keep the muscle you have? Absolutely. And it also helps to, to prevent the accumulation of abdominal fat in these women. But in men, uh, is it dangerous for the prostate? What, I mean, isn't there an argument there that prostate cancer? Well, yeah. you know, many, many doctors make that assumption because that's been the dogma in, in medicine for many, many years. Okay. However, the preponderance of evidence right now is actually showing that it's a low testosterone state that causes pr um, prostate cancer. Okay. In fact, there, Interesting. Was, yeah, there was a recent New England Journal of Medi Medicine article that actually showed that the incidence of prostate cancer increased at the same time men's testosterone levels were going down. 
Interesting, interesting. Okay, so the women, I mean, are there women that go to you? They're in their 40s and they come up low on testosterone or maybe non-existent and you give them testosterone and their whole life changes? I mean, is it ever that simple for certain certain women that you've come across? Absolutely. In fact, I had a, a young lady in her mid-30s that came in. All of her other hormones were fine, but her testosterone was low and she had the most severe fatigue. Um, she said, doctor, I have absolutely no sex drive. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my boyfriend. So we gave her testosterone and all of her symptoms reversed. She actually... I mean, how do they say it? I mean, they come back I and mean, they're pretty excited about this. Yes, yeah, she was. I mean, she, she, she came in and she was going, my God, I like my boyfriend again. You know, I'm nice. not going to okay. lose him. I'm not going to lose him. You know? Um, For certain uh, people, it's like a miracle, I guess. I mean, it's a complete turnaround. Very much so. Very much so. I mean, it changed her life for the better. I actually had another woman who came in around 48 years old and she came in complaining of extremely severe fatigue, weight gain around her middle. Um, she told me that no matter what kind of diet she followed, she couldn't take her weight off. And ag again, she was having issues with her sex drive. Uh, we replaced her testosterone and all that reversed. Within a month, she was back. She was losing weight again. The effectiveness of her workouts had increased. Um, her energy had returned. She was actually able to keep up with her grandchildren. Okay, <laughs> you know? all right. So that made a huge difference for her. Okay, so let's talk about going down the hormones for the sake of time. So thyroid. How does somebody know if they're low in thyroid? What's it responsible for in the body? Mm -hmm. Well, thyroid, many, many of the, the different hormones, you're going to hear me repeating the same things over and over. However, there are certain symptoms that are specific to each hormone. Okay. Those that I look for in patients that have low thyroid are dry skin, brittle nails, coarse hair, constipation, feelings of severe fatigue or sluggishness, and cold intolerance. A lot of people come complaining of extremely cold extremities. That's a thyroid problem. That's a thyroid problem. What about thyroid for weight loss, though? Well, you know, thyroid is actually the hormone that controls the body's metabolism. If you, don't, if you have low thyroid, you're going to have a very low metabolism. And either men or women that fit into this category that don't have enough thyroid hormone are going to put weight on. Now, on the phone, you, you, you said that you look at thyroid maybe differently than maybe some of the traditional medical doctors. Does that mean you're more aggressive? Help me understand that. We're certainly more aggressive. We, we, we actually shoot for optimal ranges in our thyroid hormone levels, okay. not normal ranges. Okay, I don't believe normal serves us. We shoot for optimal Interesting. levels. Interesting, okay, so a woman that's 45 years old who has a normal mid-range or whatever the chart is mm -hmm. for thyroid, you're saying it's not good to be normal. It's you not good to be normal, them. absolutely. Tell me about that, that's interesting. Well, for instance, one of the things that hormone does is it converts to an active hormone called T3. Many times T3 is low, and most doctors won't look at the reason why. We look a little bit deeper. There's an, actually a, 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 a thyroid hormone called reverse T3, which is a very similar to T3, but it's inactive. And many of these women that come in have normal thyroid levels by their laboratory studies, but elevated reverse T3s. And that means they're making inactive thyroid hormone. That's why they're putting the weight on. Now we're gonna take a quick break. We come back. Uh, more questions about the process. What, what uh, a woman can expect that goes there. I'd like to know what happens on day one, the kind of testing you're running okay. uh, and things like that. You're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. You are watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, natural hormone replacement therapy. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Chambers. Okay. Now, uh, for people just tuning in, we're talking about women and hormones. Also, they drag their husbands in to see you as well. Is that right? That's right. Better? That's but, right. But you see, you say some people, you give them their life back or, or you see dramatic life changes. Is that right? Elaborate on that. Um, yeah. I mean, I have women that basically are, have, have, are dragging themselves in. Um, they have no energy left. Uh, they're putting on weight. Um, they have no sex drive. Um, they're complaining of skin changes. Doctor, my, my skin is starting to wrinkle. I'm only in my mid-40s. What's going on with me? 
Um, when we replace their hormones, we see almost a total reversal. Now, if you had to say you had an overall approach, a philosophy when you look or approach the, the, the aging woman, what is it? Well, there are actually five keys to success in this program. Okay. Okay, the first is nutrition, the proper kind of nutrition and targeted nutritional supplementation. All right. Okay, the second is the proper kind of exercise because you can feed your body as much as you want and if you don't have the right kind of exercise, it's not gonna respond. So you lay this out for them? Absolutely, okay. we do. Okay. The third is hormonal balancing. Like I, I was alluding to before, we actually have to check these levels and make sure they're all in the raw, proper ratio with each other. Uh, the fourth key is, is stress reduction and obtaining adequate sleep. Uh, we use biofeedback techniques at AMI to help identify those stressors and actually be able to make suggestions to de decrease the stress in a patient. We also advocate meditation, yoga, tai chi, qigong, anything that actually get, helps to put the patient in a place where, they're, where they can decrease their stress level. Okay. Okay. Sleep's very important. If a patient doesn't get adequate sleep, the whole rest of their life goes haywire. Many of the people coming in with hormonal symptoms haven't slept well in months. Okay, so okay. you get them sleeping again. When we get them sleeping again, they actually feel better the next day. They're more alert. They have more energy. They have a new lease on life. They feel like they can conquer the world. All right, good, good. Okay, and the last step, five, your, your fifth step is what? And our fifth step is lifestyle counseling, lifestyle changes, lifestyle choices. Many people have made choices in their life that are not the healthiest. So we have to actually sit down with the patient, talk with them, and find out exactly what they're doing but in their life. But is it boring, by the way, to, to, to do what you do? I mean, people should mention, I saw you walk in here with a little shirt. I mean, you're, you're a very cut, lean guy. And so, do some people have a tough time following it? I mean, do you get them to kind of like adopt this philosophy, like you say, li lifestyle? I is it a new lifestyle? Absolutely it is. It has to be a new lifestyle. And it can be fun? It's a lifestyle choice and it is fun. All right. Once you start seeing results, once you start feeling better, you can't go back to the other way of life again. Is that right? Did they say that? Have Absolutely, you ever heard that? yes. Okay. And I can speak from experience because I do all of these things myself. All right, good, good. Okay, so you know, on, on the list of what you were talking about with hormones, uh, tell me about estrogen and progesterone as far as hormone replacement. Mm -hmm. How do you use it? Well, again, first of all, with, with all hormones, we actually have to measure. Okay. okay. We need to determine that the levels are actually clinically low, and we need to make sure that what we're doing as far as supplementation is in the proper ratios. Okay. Okay. With estrogen, if I see a woman coming in with low estrogen, um, you know, she, most, most women with low estrogens are starting to go through the menopause or their perimenopause. What are the symptoms? The symptoms are what you commonly hear of, the hot flashes, the night sweats, the low energy, depression, anxiety, moodiness, irritability, vaginal dryness, lack of any sort of sexual interest whatsoever. Um, they're multifactorial. And you know these women are the ones that actually respond to estrogen therapies. So do you ever have those cases where women that have been told they, you know, those symptoms, anxiety, depression, and they're given Prozac or they don't, they want to avoid Prozac, and 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 with the hormone replacement, that they're able to avoid these antidepressants. Well, I've actually had both of those types of women, those that actually come in on antidepressants already and say that, doctor, this is not working for me. It's not making me any better. Okay. And those that have avoided it. Okay. It, Either in, in both, both cases, whether they're on an antidepressants or whether they are hesitant to even start on antidepressants, hormonal therapy alleviates their symptoms. In fact, most of the women who come in on antidepressants, I'm able to wean them off of it in a matter of months and the depression disappears. Interesting, interesting, very interesting. Okay, so progesterone, and we are almost out of time. So what, what uh, you know, t t tell me about its role. Well, progesterone is actually the hormone that's known as the feel-good hormone. Okay. Um, the reason being is because if it's not in proper balance with estrogen, a woman's mood's going to deteriorate. She's going to become more irritable. She's going to actually start having the so-called PMS syndrome. Okay. okay. Progesterone is responsible for PMS. It's responsible for irregular menstrual cycles. It's responsible for spot spotting between Do you find cycles. low progesterone? I mean, is that very common in your practice? It's, it's very common, actually. In fact, when, when women come in complaining of insomnia, 
um, inability to get a good night's rest, that's one of the first things I'll look at because progesterone actually aids in sleep. Now, I know you, you guys are big on testing. I mean, you like to test. Absolutely. But are you at a point now, because you've been doing this long enough, where a woman could go in your office, start rattling off her symptoms, and you go, I know what her problem is. I bet when we get our test back, it's going to show this, this, and this. I mean, does that happen to you nowadays? Yeah. In fact, I, I actually will go over it with my physician's assistants who work with me, and I'll say, well, this patient has this symptom, this, 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 and this. What do you think's wrong with her? And then I'll put my two cents in. And so all the women at your practice are on hormones, so they're all happy. Is that right? Um, they're not all <laughs> on hormones, but for the most part, they are happy, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, good. Now, uh, final message. A woman, by the way, because you've said that you don't have to age the way the standard concept of aging, you know, 40 and it slowly goes downhill from there, that you say the second half of life could be the best half of a woman's life. Elaborate on that. A little bit about your philosophy. Well, I mean, when you think about it, you've gained a lot of experience and a lot of wisdom. If you can still feel as good as you did during the first half of your life, with all the knowledge and experience you've gained, there's no reason to believe that the second half of your life can't be the best ever. Okay, good, good. Okay, so somebody watching this, to get started, they go to the website, call, call uh, your center, just make an appointment. Absolutely. And uh, our initial consultations are free. We'd love to come in for you to come in and talk and we'll go from there. All right. Well, thank you for coming to the show. Very interesting. Thank you very Good much, stuff. Randy. I appreciate it. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you'd like to see this interview again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. You could put in uh, AMI or... Uh, bioidentical hormones or natural hormones are, of course, Dr. Chambers. For now, I wish you could help.